Right, grade 11 is off to start the next question, which is question 3. Um, firstly, it says the graphs of f, and it gives me the graph of f. Now, if it gives me the graph of f, I can tell you the this particular format is largely useless, except for the fact that I now know that my y-intercept is at 0, 30. And they've given me the equation of the straight line, which is also not particularly useful, except for the fact that I know that d is at 0, 10. So they've given me both my y-intercepts. Then it says A and B are the x-intercepts of F. Okay, that's quite nice. C is the y-intercept of F, which I'd already assumed, to be honest, which is a terrible thing to assume. And F is the turning point. Okay, so that's good to know. This is the turning point. A is the x-intercept of D, of, um, of the straight line, and D is the y-intercept. Right, moving on. So if first question says, determine the, the coordinates of A, B, C, and D. Now, I've already found C and D, so I'm not going to bother with them. There's C is 0, 30, and D is 0, 10. So all I need is A and B. And what were A and B again? The easiest way to find them both would just be to find the x-intercepts of the parabola. So what is true at every x-intercept in the whole wide world? y is equal to 0 at those two points there. So I'm going to take my equation. So it's 0 equals minus 2x squared minus 4x plus 30. And um, personally, I would divide by negative 2 or factorize out a negative 2 if people prefer, um, just because it makes me it easier for me to factorize in the end. And it's a fairly easy one in that I think it's plus 5 and minus 3 which leads me to believe that either x is 3 or x is negative 5. So I've decided that a must be the negative 5 simply due to its position, and b must be 3, 0. Now always look at your graph and look. We don't draw to scale, but it's got to be plausible. And that does look plausible. That could possibly be at negative 5, and that could possibly be at 3. Right, on to the next question. It says, hence, write down the values for x for which f of x is greater than 0. Now, f of x was my parabola. So they want to know, where is this parabola greater than 0? Well, on the x-axis is where it's equal to 0. So where it is above 0 is between a and b. This region here shows me the region where the parabola is greater than 0. So a was at negative 3 b was at 5, this is one interval, my x must be greater than negative 5 and less than 3. Not equal to negative 5 and 3 because the question said greater than 0, not equal to 0. So that was quite a nice inequality question. Next question says write down the axis of symmetry of f. Now there's two ways to do this. The moment I always like to write down on my graph when I find information out. And so I would personally have written down those two x-intercepts the moment I'd found them out because my axis of symmetry of any parabola is the vertical line through the turning point. So basically I need to find my turning point. Now I've said this many times there are multiple ways to find the turning point. We could complete the square definitely never my first option, never any option actually Secondly, we could use negative b over 2a, which I know we've seen a lot before. But the moment I have my two x-intercepts, that's wonderful news. Because my turning point is slap bang in the middle of my two x-intercepts. And how we find a middle is we add my two x-values together and divide by 2. So I'd get negative 2 over 2 which is negative 1. Now you can ve fairly quickly work out whether you're right because that's clearly going to be 4 units and that's going to be 4 units. So I know that I'm right. And so my x is equal to negative 1 is the vertical line going straight through my turning point. So that will be my axis of symmetry. Right, on to the next one. Determine the coordinates of E, one of the points of intersection. Now, we already know A, it's at negative 5. So if I find these points of intersection and I don't get negative 5 as an answer, I know I've done something wrong. Now, we've done this countless times now, so this needs to become the question which we all get 100% for. Because I just need to equate my graphs. It's negative 2x squared minus 4x plus 30 is going to equal 
2x plus 10. I equate the two graphs to each other because it's where the two graphs are equal. Now that's a standard quadratic equation except I'm going to make sure that everything's on the right hand side just so that I get rid of my negative coefficient of x squared. I'm going to divide by 2 or factorize out of 2 depending on what you prefer. And I'm going to get x plus 5 which seems to make sense and x minus 3. Now immediately I've done that, I know I've made a mistake. Now why do I know I've made a mistake? And this is a really important thing. We all make mistakes, but you've got to constantly look at your answer and say, is that possible? Now if I just continue, I think I'm right so far, because I'm like, yay, minus 5. And then I look here, I'm like, x is equal to 3. And then I'm like, hang on one moment, that can't possibly be right, because I already know that b is 3. So immediately I think, no, 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 I've definitely done a mistake. And you know where my mistake was? is my mistake is there. I should have said 10 minus 30, which is, um, oh no, sorry, I should have said 20 divided by 2 is 10. So I need to go figure that out, which means that this bracket will change. But that's what's really important. All going to make mistakes, but just make sure that you go back and think to yourself, E can't possibly be th 3 because B was 3, and then you can go fix your mistake. So actually, it becomes X is 2 because 5 times 2 is 10. So that's far better. So now my point at E is the point 2 and I don't know what and it said determine the coordinates. So I must actually go find the coordinate. Now not a problem. I'm going to go put 2 back into my straight line and say well 2 times 2 plus 10 is 4 plus 10 which is 14. Again I'm going to go look at that. Does that look plausible? Well this C was at 30 and this D was at 10. So yeah, E could E has to be between 10 and 30, and so 14 is about right. So there's my point of intersection. Now my last question, we're on to a vertical distance type of question. Now there's three vertical distance questions. In question one, we did the basic vertical distance question, where you know the value of x so that you can easily find a vertical distance. Now this question is once again an easy vertical distance question, because it says determine the length of fg if f h, now it shouldn't say f h, it should say f g, is parallel to the y-axis. So they want you to find this vertical distance if this is parallel. Now they're only telling you it's parallel so you know that it's a perfectly vertical line. Now this is very easy because every vertical distance is equal to top y minus bottom y. Now hopefully you know top y minus bottom y because you know the y values and then you can easily do it. Now in this case I don't know those y values but I do know something very very important. I know that the x value at f is negative 1. And so I know that I can find that y value very easily. I know that the x value at g is negative 1. So my question is, what is f of negative 1? Because that will be the parabola value at negative 1. So I'm going to go substitute it into my equation. Minus 4 times negative 1 plus 30. I need to get a value above 30, otherwise I know I've made a mistake, because 30 was at c. So I get negative 2 plus 4 which is 2, and so I get 32. Now, as you can see, it's clearly a terrible scale because there's no ways that f looks like it's 2 units above c. Now, that's the thing. We never draw to scale, but we do draw accurately. So if something should be positive, it needs to come out being positive. So don't be alarmed when that doesn't look like it could be 32. It's perfectly feasible because we don't draw to scale. Now what I need is I need to find the value of the straight line at negative 1. Now there I'm expecting something less than 10 because the y-intercept was at 10 and I got negative, sorry, I got positive 8. Also expecting a positive and that seems entirely possible. And then that's great. My vertical distance is very easy because my vertical distance is 32 take away 8 which is 24 units. So that's your easy type question. Well I suppose it's not completely straightforward because you first have to find your y values but it's much easier than that question in question two about maximizing the distance. Now what's an in-between difficulty in terms of vertical distance? This is our last question and this is our third type of vertical distance question. This question says h is a point on the straight line and i is a point on the 
parabola such that hki, so there should have been a little k there, is parallel to the y-axis, so it's just telling you that it's perfectly vertical. Now, if it says that hki is 60 units, determine the length of OK. So what they're saying to you is they're saying to you that distance there, sorry, not that distance, I had to go all the way down, all the way down to there is 60 units. So they're telling you that my vertical distance is equal to 60. So this is kind of like a working backwards question. Instead of asking you for the vertical distance, they've told you the vertical distance. They want to know what the distance is from O, the origin, to K. So they want to know what that distance is. So basically they need to know the X value at K. So they want to know what X value makes this vertical distance. So this is where we need to go back to what is vertical distance. H, K, I, the vertical distance, would be equal to top Y minus bottom Y. Now, you don't know this top Y and you don't know the bottom Y. You don't even know the X value where they are occurring. So this is different to 3.5. In 3.5, we knew the X value. Here we know nothing. Okay, so here we do know that HKI is 60. We do know that the top Y value is a straight line, which is 2X plus 10. And we do know that the bottom Y value is negative 2X squared minus 4X plus 30. So we have those expressions, very similar to the question in question 2, we use the expressions. Except this time we know what the answer is. We don't have to maximize it, we know the answer. So this just becomes a quadratic equation. So if I solve it very quickly, plus 2x squared plus 4x minus 30. So make one side equal to 0. 2x squared plus 6x minus 20. So it's minus 80. And then either factorize out the 2 or divide by 2 to make your life easier. And then if you're struggling to factorize, don't forget you can use the formula. But always show your sub substitution into the formula. So I'm actually going to say plus 8, take away 5. And so I get x is equal to negative 8, or x is equal to 5. Now just let's go look at what the question asked. The question says, what's the length of OK? Now OK is from there to there. Now this is telling me there's two answers. So apparently when x is negative 8, which is somewhere down here, the vertical distance between the two graphs would also be 60. But clearly we're talking about the positive x value here, so not that one, because k is clearly in the positive region on the graph. So therefore, we can assume that OK equals 5 units. So this is the third type of question that they can ask in a vertical distance question. If they give you the vertical distance, can you work backwards? And that's the end of question three.